Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you the eight essential tools that every homeowner needs. Whether you're a new homeowner that is just getting into the game or maybe you have a project coming up that you're looking to dive into, these are the eight tools that every homeowner must have. The tape measure, guys. In this, it probably seems so obvious, but literally every single project you're gonna do at your house, you're gonna need to measure something somewhere throughout that project. It seems like a super basic thing, but think of everything that you might possibly do. If that outlet box needs to have a certain size cover, you gotta measure it. And if the plumbing needs to be so long, you're gonna have to measure those pipes. So the tape measure is the number one thing that we use around our house in every single project. It doesn't matter if it's one of those cheap ones, there's a lot of different options out there. Just get yourself a tape measure, use the same one every time. It's accurate, it's affordable. Next on the list is the impact driver in a drill. And typically these come as a set and there's a lot of different options out there. So go ahead and do your research and make a decision on what brand you wanna go with. But typically you can get these as a set. And although they look very similar, these are two very different tools that can be used in so many different ways around your house. And we'll start out with the impact driver. This is going to be used probably 70% of the time out of this set. The impact driver is specifically designed to drive screws in efficiently and very deep with a lot of power without using a ton of juice. It's got a hammer effect to really impact anything in there. That is its main purpose. You can get different bits and attachments for this to do all sorts of projects in little quirky angles that you would never even imagine. There's so many options for impact driver bits out there. And then the second half of that kit is going to be your standard drill. And typically this comes in a half inch chuck drill. And this is what you're gonna use for any sort of hole that you need to drill through many different types of materials, whether that's wood, metal, plastic, and that can be a really small hole size all the way up to a three or a four inch big hole saw bit. If you're going through a piece of plywood to get some plumbing to drop through there, the drill is going to be super handy. Not only can you just run the drill bit, you can also put a bit in here so you can drive screws with it. And it is just one of the most useful tools to have around your home for any of those projects that come up. Coming up next on the list is another super useful tool, although yeah, obvious, your hammer. And this, yes, has a very obvious function of hammering in nails, and it's really good at doing that. So anything that you need to hammer a few nails in, tap a few small finish nails, this is the guy to do it. Demolition, second best function with a hammer. If you gotta do a little renovation in your house and maybe need to tear some cabinets down, pull off some wall material, and you know that you're not going to be saving those items, this is the tool for that. Just hammer it right through the wall, pull it down, rip it apart. It's great for knocking items loose and just ripping things to shreds. Shims and wedges is another great scenario for when you need to use a hammer, and it's just kind of one of those delicate things choke up on the grip here and just tap those wedges in. Maybe you're hanging a window in a frame and it's not quite level, you gotta just tap that wedge in. The hammer is your go-to, comes in lots of different options as well, so find one that best fits you. After you just hammered that nail in the wall to hang up the picture that your wife has been nagging you about, you're gonna wanna make sure that it is level. And this is where this guy comes in, your standard two foot level. And it does come in many different sizes, 12 inch all the way up to like eight feet, guys. So figure out what one you're gonna need that fits your project. And it has a couple different uses. Stand it up on edge to check that post that might be leaning, holding the deck up on the back of your house. You wanna make sure that it is good and plumb. So you can stand this guy up and check that. Or if you need to mark a straight line on something, this is your guy, you know, that this is built perfectly straight. So any line you need to mark, you mark it out super confidently with your two foot level. And the level's best friend, they go hand in hand, is your speed square. This is a tool you're going to use mainly for marking perfectly straight 90 degree angles across a piece of lumber that you're going to wanna cut. There are so many different things you can do with a speed square, and that's a whole nother video in itself. So I don't wanna dive into too much, but you can mark lines. There's different measurements on here. There's different angles on here. If you wanted to build a set of stairs or need to know your rise and your run, there are so many uses for a speed square, and it does go hand in hand with the level. So check out just a cheap speed square, and it'll keep everything good and straight. 
Coming in at number five on the list is electrical tools. And before we even go into what we have here, I wanted to just let you guys know that make sure you're allowed to work on your electrical in your home. Typically as the homeowner, you're allowed to work on it, but just be sure to check any codes or regulations in your area and also know what you're doing, guys. Have the research, have the knowledge under your belt before you dive into doing anything electrical because it can be very, very dangerous. And with that being said, you don't need too many tools for just basic electrical around your house. If you need to replace a switch or an outlet or change something out, maybe a fixture, a light, these are the two tools that you're going to need. And that is a good set of wire strippers and just a simple electrical tester. You don't need any of these fancy electrical testers that show you the voltage and stuff like that. All you need is one of these light indicators to let you know that there is no electricity on that while you're working on it. It's super basic, super simple, kind of a foolproof way to make sure that you don't get zapped on any electrical work that you're doing around your house. Good set of strippers. Make sure you get these bright colored handle ones. It's way easier to find these when you drop them down, let's say in the crawl space or up in the attic where a lot of that electrical is ran. Good set of strippers, good and sharp. These are the only two items that you should really need doing basic home electrical. After you use that speed square to mark out your perfectly square line on that piece of lumber, this is going to be your next best tool to use. And this is a circular saw. Guys, we use this all the time around here. Mainly used for more of a rough type framing situation or say you need to rip that long piece of plywood and even at an angle, you can put a miter into almost every circular saw out there. And with that being said, there are a lot of options. So be sure to check out the one that's best gonna suit you. You got cordless options, corded options, and you can go through so many different types of materials with this. Not only can you cut lumber with a circular saw, but you can also cut masonry with it, you can cut metal with it. So it's not just kind of this single use tool that only cuts wood. There's a lot of different options out there. You don't have to get an expensive one, guys, but you do need a circular saw for any decent sized project you're gonna be doing around your house. Next on our list is the headlamp. And I know you guys might think this is stupid, but I dare you, please wear a headlamp for a week. Everything that you do, whether that's working on your plumbing or even just putting a couple screws in a piece of lumber, you can never have too much light in whatever you are working on. The headlamp is so useful, guys. It's super easy to overlook how hard it is to work in low light situations. And I'm telling you, put the headlamp on, you will be so happy. It's not just in low light situations too, like say the power goes out or something's going on at night on the back and you need to check it out. This is where this guy comes in, keep it handy, keep it right there where you have it. It's great that these are pretty affordable now and they're rechargeable, so you're not out there buying batteries time and time again. This is a super useful tool to have around. Number eight on the list is the jigsaw, guys. And this is a tool that is used to cut any sort of radius in a few different types of materials. Whether you need to cut like a nice little circle for a can light recessed in that ceiling or a big radius for that half pipe that you're building for little Timmy, this is the tool you're going to want to use. You can also cut plastics with this, acrylics. We use this all the time around the house here, mainly for cutting in like plunge cuts where you need to cut out a chunk within that material. When you're going to put a new recessed outlet in and you gotta hack out that wall and you need a perfect hole, not overcutting those lines like a circular saw would, this is the guy you're going to want to choose to get a nice crisp cut. There's many different blade options, whether you wanna make that cut really quick and have kind of a rough edge, or you can slow down that cut by adding more teeth to that blade, making it a much finer, cleaner cut. This is a super useful tool to have in any home project that you're gonna be doing at your house. We have shown you the eight essential tools that every homeowner needs. And there's a lot that we didn't list. We have a few honorable mentions here that are really nice to have in the arsenal. Stuff like the angle grinder or your open end wrenches, pliers, a ratchet set, or maybe even a nail gun. These are all tools that you can add to your collection to make those other jobs a little bit easier. And we know that we have missed so many. So let us know down below what tools you guys use on your home improvement projects. And if you wanna see how all these tools are put to use, we have a video picked out here in here for you guys to check out. We'll catch you later.